These are the gifts I'm sending to the young bride, this golden wreath and this golden veil. They are not without value. There is nothing like them in this whole world, or at least the Western world. The God of the Son gave them to my father's father, and I have kept them in this deep chest to some high occasion which has now come. I have great joy in giving these jewels to Creon's daughter, for the glory of life consists of being generous to one's friend and merciless to one's enemies. You know what a friend she has been to me, all coins know. The slaves talk of it, the old stones in the walls have watched and laughed. See, it is almost alive. Gold is a living thing. Such is pure gold. For when the body has warmed it, how it will shine. Why didn't he come? What keeps him? Oh, my lady, presently, I have but now his character. He was beyond the gate, watching the race. Where was this thing that happened? A young bear, broke his chariot, and tore with her teeth a stallion. Take this time, eh? It is intolerable to sit and wait. Take these into the house and keep them at hand until I come. You say that a mare has attacked a stallion? She tore it cruelly. I saw him being led away. A black racer. His blood ran down from his throat to the fellow. You're sure he's coming? You're sure? He said he would. Let's make haste then. For any irrational things have been happening lately. The face of nature is flawed with bad omens. Yesterday, a slave came from the harbor gate carrying a basket of new caught fish. One of the fish took fire and burned and went back with a high flame. The thing was witnessed by many persons. And a black leopard was seen gliding through the marketplace. You haven't told me yet. Do you think Creon's daughter will be glad of her gift? Ah, oh, Medea, sometimes well, is too bad. She'll be glad, however. She'll take them and put them on. She'll wear them. She'll strut in them. She'll peacock in them. I see him coming now. Well, I have come, I tell you plainly, not for your sake, the children, your woman says that you have your wits again, and you are willing to look beyond your own woes. It seems doubtful. Where are the children? I have made inquiry. I can find fosterage for them in Epidurus or any other of the several cities that are Creon's friends. I'll visit them from time to time and watch that they are well kept. You mean take them from me? Be careful, Jason. I'm not patient yet. I am the one who labored in pain to bear them. I can't smile while I lose them, but I am learning. I am learning. No, Jason, I will not give up my little ones to cold care. Hard faces, harsh hands, it will be far better for them to share my wandering ocean of beggary and bleak exile. I love them, Jason. Only if you would keep them here and care for them in Corinth, I might consent. Gladly, but they are exiled. In your own house? Gladly I do, but they are exiled. As you are, I asked Creon and he refused it. Creon to take my children from me? Forgive me, Jason, as I do you. We have too much wrath, and our acts are closing in on us. On me, I mean. Retribution is from the gods, and it breaks our hearts. But you feel no guilt. You fear nothing. Nothing can touch you. It is wonderful to stand serene above fate while earthlings wince, if it lasts. It does not always last. Do you love the children, Jason? Huh? Certainly. The children? Certainly. I am their father. Oh, but that's not enough. If I'm to give them up to you, be patient with me. I must question you first, and very deeply, to the quick. If anything happens to them, would you be grieved? Nothing will happen to them, Adia, if in my care rests your mind on it. You must pardon me. It is not possible to be certain of that. If they were killed and their blood ran on the floor of the house or, or down the deep earth, would you be grieved? You have a sick mind, Medea. What a weak thing a woman is, always dreaming of evil. Answer me! Yes, after I had cut their kill into red polyps, I grieve. That is true. Vengeance makes grief bearable. But Creon's daughter? More than your sons? They'll have to take the sad journey with me. Tell the boys to come out and bid their father farewell. I can take them from you by force, Medea. Try it, you! No. Creon decided otherwise. He said they will share my exile. Come, Jason. Let's be friends. At last. I'm quite patient now. I have learned. Come, boys, come. Speak to your father. No, we're friends. We're, we're friends again. We're not angry anymore. Big boys, tall fellows, how have you grown since I've seen you? Smile for him, children. Give him your hands. Me. I 
think he's afraid of you, sir. What? You'll learn, my man, not to fear me. You'll make your enemies run away from you when you grow up. And you, Captain, how would you like a horned bow to hunt rabbits with? Wolves, I mean. Don't give them to him, Medea. If you do, it will ache forever. You have refuge. Take them there. Athens is beautiful. Silence! Look at him! He loves them, ah! Huh? Therefore his dear children are not going to that city, but a darker city, where no games are played, no music is heard. Do you think I'm a cow loving after the calf, or a bitch with pups licking the ha hand that struck her? Watch and see. Watch this man, woman. He's going to weep. I think he's going to weep blood, and quite soon, and much more than I have wept. Watch and keep silence. Jason, are the boys dear to you? I think I'm satisfied that you love them. These two young heroes. Oh, oh! God's hand, Medea, what is it? What does it matter? Nothing. It is hard to let them go. This I have thought of. You shall take them to Creon's daughter, your wife, and make them kneel to her, and ask her to ask her father to let them stay here in Corinth. He will grant, grant it. He is growing old. He denies her nothing. Even that hard king loves his only child. What she asks is done. You will go with the boys, Jason, and speak for them. They are not skillful yet. In supplication, and I'll send gifts. I'll put gifts in their hands. People say that gifts will persuade even the gods. It is well thought of. Will she listen to us? Why, if I ask it, she'll hardly refuse me anything. And I believe that you're right. She can rule Creon. Bring me those gold things. Dear ones, brave little falcons, little pawns in my agony, Go, ask that proud breastless girl of her bitter charity whether she will let you nest here until your wings fledge, while for your mother flies a dark storm. I'm sorry for you, hurting is hard. I can bear it, and worse too. Oh, here, here are your things. Take them, darlings, into your little hands. carefully by the cases. Don't touch the gold or it might tarnish. Why well, these things are king's charge which you shouldn't, Medea. It's too much. Creon's house has gold enough on its own. Oh, if she'll wear them, what should I want with woven gold vanities? Black is my wear. The women out to be very happy. With such jewels and such a husband, huh? Her sun is rising. From go mine is going down. I hope to see a sunset. The little gold wreath is pretty, isn't it? It looks like fire. Thine leaves, the flashing arrow, sharp leaves. They have weight, though. <sighs> Gold's too heavy a burden for little hand. Carry them, you, until you come to the palace. Farewell, sweet boys, brave little trudging pilgrims from the black wave to the black desert. Take the stuff in. Be sure you lay it in our hands. Come back and tell me what happens. Tell me what happens. I'm Mr. James, and I know it's been a few years, but I still love you.